This video is for educational purposes only. The techniques and tools demonstrated are intended solely for ethical hacking and authorized security testing. Unauthorized use of these methods to gain access to systems or networks without permission is illegal and unethical. The creator of this video is not responsible for any misuse or damage caused by the information provided. Hey everyone, so today in this uh, video, I'll be showing you how you can get a fully interactive uh, reverse shell from any PC on the internet uh, just by using a very cheap device called the uh, Digispark. Uh, which literally costs like less than a dollar on Aliexpress or some websites like those so we will be using uh, ng rock so I'll be talking about this uh, later and this is uh, an illustration that I have uh, created on how we will be performing this exploit so obviously we have this digispark and I will not be showing how to set this up because there are already hundreds of videos that people have uh, created that show you the setup and this will basically have our Arduino script that I will show in a while and then you will insert this into the PC which executes a payload that goes to our ngrock server and that payload then gets forwarded to our local Kali Linux machine so before we begin we need to craft a payload so let's talk about that so if I go so in the description, uh, you will get a file uh, on my GitHub. There will be a file called payload.zip. So as soon as you extract that, you will get this file. So what this file is basically, it has the SOCAD windows executable, uh, which we are pretty much using to get a reverse shell. So you do not need to change any of these files, but the only thing that you need to change is this power shell script, which is called power.ps1. So I'll just open it in my notepad to see what's happening. So you can you can see that it creates a variable called command uh, where it just executes the socat.exe executable and connects it to an IP address. Now we will get this IP address uh, from ngrock very soon. And in the second line, it just starts a still the process where uh, it basically runs this exe file. Now to get this IP address, uh, let's go to our Kali Linux uh, machine, which is here. Okay, now once you are there on your uh, Kali Linux machine, uh, I just want to uh, show you guys that my host operating system, uh, where I'll be executing my payload, they're not on the same network as my Kali Linux machine. So if I execute fconfig, and if I go to my host uh, Windows operating system, and if I check the IP there, you'll see that they are uh, not on the same IP. So if I uh, take this and if I try to ping this machine, I'll get no response. So this just shows that they are not on the same network. And this is just like you uh, getting a reverse shell on any other PC uh, on the internet. Okay, so the next thing that we'll do is we will need to set up uh, a tunnel or a port forwarding. So the way you would do that is you'll use something called ngrock. So this just allows you to uh, forward your local ports to the internet. And uh, setting up uh, setting it up is fairly easy. I'll uh, post a video in the description below. Just follow that. It's a two minute video. And once you have done that, just execute this command. Uh, yeah. And then you will get the screen uh, with your IP and your port, which forwards all the TCP traffic to this local host. Okay, and once uh, we have forwarded the port, so the next thing that you need to do is start an actual SOCAT listener on the local host. So if I go ahead, uh, all I need to do is uh, execute this command socat tcp l stands for listen on port 4444 and a dash so this will uh, now listen for tcp connections on our uh, local host and now what we need to do is if you remember that we had a powershell file in our payload.zip and you need to uh, change the IP and the port with what uh, ngrock gave you. 
so in order to get the IP what I'll do is just copy this IP uh, uh, the domain name and just ping it so there is your IP just copy that and in your notepad just change it to the new IP that we got and then for the port if you go back to the SOCAT uh, the ngrock page you see that we also have a port so let's just copy that as well and once that's done simply save this file and basically our payload is ready now let's go to the illustration again so we have our payload which uh, basically connects to our ngrock ip uh, which is this thing the 0.tcp. Uh, in domain and then that forwards the traffic to my local port which is this thing the socat listener right there and the next step that you need to do is uh, go back to the file where you have the payload which is this thing and you will need to uh, basically this should be in a folder called uh, payload and what you now need to do is you need to uh, zip you need to make a zip file of this so you need to uh, basically compress it to a zip file so that will create a folder called payload.zip which is then going to have the, uh, these folders and now what you need to do is you need to uh, host this somewhere like it can be your own uh, web server just host it anywhere so in our case I will be hosting it on my github but I do not recommend doing this uh, the best way is uh, hosting it on an actual web server all right so I paused the video and I went ahead and I uploaded the script to github again i do not recommend doing this you should upload this uh, file to your own web server but just for the easiness i am using github now let's go now the last step you need to do is uh, you need to flash the arduino code on your digispark so let's go ahead and try to understand what's happening in the code so it's, it's pretty straightforward uh, code so it just emulates itself as an uh, as, as a hardware device just like a keyboard or a mouse and then it what it does is it sends a keystroke of Windows key and R that opens the run dialog and then it opens PowerShell for that and then it uses the uh, PowerShell's uh, net object to download the zip file now if you are hosting it somewhere else You'll need to change this URL. Uh, you'll need to change this URL uh, to basically the URL where you are hosting your payload.zip file. And then it basically just unzips that file. It goes into the payload directory and it simply executes our PowerShell script and then exits the dialog. And that's it. Then you should get a connection on our SOCAT uh, listener right there so let's go ahead um, so just flash this to your digispark I have already done this and now what I will do is I will uh, go ahead and put in my USB uh, the uh, a tiny microcontroller and let's see what happens okay so while recording my PC uh, crashed so don't get confused if you see a different port here because I had to do all of those steps again but uh, all the steps are same so I performed them anyway so now what I will do is I will be uh, inserting my uh, USB uh, the, the Digispark device into my PC so let's do that and this should uh, gain a reverse shell so what I will do is I will go ahead and insert it and I have just inserted into my host operating system and as you can see that PowerShell has been executed and it's 
basically downloading the payload and then now it's going to unzip it notice that my firewall did not give any warnings which means that we have bypassed it and we have executed it and you'll see that we have a session here and boom you see that we have a reverse shell here on the host operating system there's nothing fishy and we were able to successfully uh, execute this payload just want to confirm my defender so if I go ahead and go to my virus and threat protection you'll see that my defender is on and it bypassed it and I still do have the session so I can execute commands you can see that who am I returns the desktop and if I run IP config you'll see that uh, I'm able to get the output of all the wireless interfaces with their IP addresses so this was it and we were able to successfully spawn a reverse shell bypassing the defender using a device as cheap as one dollar so guys thank you for watching uh, this was it for the video and all the links uh, for all the resources will be there in my description below including the Arduino code and the, the payload.zip file even the medium article thank you